Hi, I'm Bonstable County Sheriff Jim Cummings. Think back to your school days, a long time ago for some of us. I still remember how important the principal was to how the whole school ran. We have people like that here at our jail, only we call them house managers. School one, or in this case, house one, holds one distinct kind of inmate. House two holds another type, and house three, yet another. If one runs smoothly, and two runs smoothly, and three runs smoothly, the outcome is predetermined. The whole building runs smoothly. But forget the math. Instead, let's delve deeper into the material. Let's meet a couple of these principals in the houses they run. We have an APOD, which is an orientation unit, which when people come in or inmates come in straight off the street or from the courts or whatever it may be, they're introduced to APOD. At that point, it's our responsibility as officers to orientate them uh, to what we expect of them. Um, we expect of, you know, rules and regulations and to abide what we're asking. And, and it's a grace period. We give them a grace period before we move them along. The whole plant design of this facility, every unit has a little more than what APOD has, has um, for, for a plant design within that unit. So when somebody comes in from the street, from a court, from a transfer in another, other apartment, whatever it may be, they're housed in APOD. They go into APOD and at that point, basic essentials are there. Basic needs are met and if their behavior, basically what it comes down to, their attitudes dictate our behavior. When it comes down to that they've shown us within 10 to 30 days that they can meet the standards we're asking, we're going to move them over to B-Pod or C-Pod. Uh, B-Pod is, is unique on its own. It's a high profile unit. You're dealing with, with the nature of the charges are a lot more serious when it comes down to murder, attempted murder, carrying a firearm, uh, rape, aggravated rape, home invasion. Um, your, 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 your nature of the inmate is different. Uh, but at that point we move them from A-Pod and they progress to C-Pod. It's all pre pretty much pre-trial inmates. They have not been sentenced by the judge yet and they're housed here until they wait until they see what's going to happen. Are they going to do state time? Are they going to be released? Are they going to be going to the House of Correction, which is the other side of the facility? Uh, but it all starts from APOD. It could be any charge. It could be, uh, it could be a probate issue where they're, they're waiting to pay child support all the way to murder. So it was a huge range. It could be second offense OUI, it could be an E in the nighttime, B and E in the daytime. Uh, again, any, anything that you can be locked up for on the street, they'll be housed here. So for anybody who, who gets locked up, we have a shooting in Hyannis, somebody is shot, killed, they're charged with murder. That, those subjects will be brought here, they'll be brought in through our intake area, booked in our intake area, and housed in this house. So I, when I say it, we can deal from a petty theft, all the way to murder. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things that the general public doesn't understand what we do here in this institution. They all have to come here first before they go to the big house upstate. In the first 24 to 48 hours is the most critical period for our officers to monitor these people coming in because you have the onset of, of detox, you have the onset of suicide, you have desperate measures of desperate times. So we have, as officers are monitoring these things because we don't want them to take their lives. It's our it's care, custody, control and we have to be able to monitor what happens with their mental aspect of things. Physically, Yes, they're here. Mentally, we don't know what they're doing. And it's that first 24 to 48 hours that is critical for us. That's why we've invested in a body scan down in our intake area, uh, where at that point we, we are aggressive when it comes down to searching the person, searching the body, uh, and doing our best to reduce any type of contraband coming in our facility. Um, in today's times, we're dealing with a huge opiate addiction. They're, and what they're doing is they're, they're concealing this stuff in their body cavities uh, and, and they're trying to bring it into an institution so they don't get that, um, you know, that fact of, of detox. They can continue with their high here. Or they make money and they sell it inside the institution for a lot more money than it would be on the street. Um, but with the body scan, we have that ability and capability to determine if they are holding anything within their side. And, and it could be narcotics, it could be weapons. It could be any of that stuff, um, and, and our intake uh, staff does a phenomenal job in, in monitoring that. 
when new officers are coming in, we look to them and say, hey, listen, the way we want you to work these units is a community policing model. You're out there amongst the inmates, feeling the vibe, feeling the climate of the unit. You're hearing what's going on. You understand what's going on in the phone calls. Maybe the guy had a bad day, but you can actually forecast what's going to happen. And you can only do that by being inside the unit. House 2 is our special uh, management population. We have five units within this, this house versus in House 1 we only have three. Uh, house 2, uh, we deal with uh, the female population pre-trial. We have house, which is our sentenced inmates. We have protective custody, which is our at-risk uh, population. And then we have administrative segregation and we also have isolation. In GPOD, which is administrative segregation, um, we have people who are pending disciplinary action. They uh, have failed to follow the rules of the, uh, and regulations of the facility. They've, uh, they've done something wrong within our, uh, with our facility. So within any of the units, we've had to house them there. And at that point, they have to go through due process. A second individu uh, individual that would be housed in there was somebody based on their past institutional uh, history. Uh, they could be an escape issue. They could be uh, somebody who just does not blend with other inmates. He, uh, assaultive. Uh, they could be a predator when it comes down to you know assaulting somebody. Um, uh, they could be an escape risk. They could be a security threat group, which is a part of a gang, a Bloods, the Crips, the g gangsters, disciples. Uh, and we try to isolate those individuals and try to determine if they're suitable for housing in a general population unit. They're housed in that unit. Basically, it's a 23-hour lockdown. Uh, they come out for, for basically 75 minutes of recreation a day. Um, they come out for 60 minutes of recreation and 15 minutes for shower and phone privileges. That's once a day, Monday through Friday. Um, it's a tough climate to live in when you're used to being out in population all day. When you're locked down all day, you have very limited movement. Um, so with that said, it, there's a lot that comes down on an inmate when they're housed in there. So uh, a lot comes into play with different aspects of our staff. You have classification that has to meet with these people in a particular time period. You have mental health that has to review them on a daily period. Uh, regular uh, me uh, medical staff has to, you know, you're dealing with these individuals because of the status and the classification they're in. We manage the population here to the point where we are in control. The officers can, um, basically control the ebb and flow of anything that goes on in here. Not the inmates, not the individual. If they don't want to follow the rules and regulations of this institution, then they'll spend their time in administrative segregation and segregation. That's our deterrent, and hopefully they'll stay in population and they'll progressively go through the facility in a positive manner. House three inmates are different from house one, uh, that they're sentence inmates. Everybody's uh, already serving their time. And what you have, you have uh, different classification levels down here. You have J-Pod, which are the workers within uh, the building, laundry, kitchen, uh, canteen. And you have uh, M-Pod, which is a substance abuse uh, shock program. It's, they call it the RSAP program. Basically, sometimes inmates are mandated by the court to go through the program to get an early release. Uh, and, um, that's basically for substance abuse people. Then you have LPOD. LPOD is your uh, outside work crews that uh, maintain, uh, you know, DPW, the roads, clean the roads. Uh, you have a grounds crew that do the grounds, uh, the facility. You also have community service. They go around to different churches, uh, schools, do painting projects, and it's, uh, the sheriff's real big on uh, the community service program, and they, they uh, receive many accolades from the community uh, for their work with uh, Captain Brait. Then you have K-Pod. K-Pod is basically your new sentenced inmates uh, that uh, are waiting, you know, a game plan, whether they go to J-Pod to work, uh, M-Pod, and we do have people that go directly from K-Pod to L-Pod to go out on work crews, but they have a real strict guideline of uh, people that can go out there, no violent crimes, no restraining orders, uh, no gun charges. Well, what you have down here, you have pr roughly, say we have 400 inmates, which we are right around now, right. probably anywhere from 200 to 250, 300 uh, sentenced inmates. 
So I do have the brunt of the population down here. But as I say, the numbers don't mean that it's, it's a harder house to run. Because like I say, most of them are in a program, they're working, and you know, when they're working, they stay out of trouble for the most part. Yeah, this constant movement down here. You have, you know, you have the work crews going out. You have church services. There's always something. I have, unlike the other two zones, they only have two zone offices. I have a third because basically during the day he's designated as a programs officer to handle uh, education and any other thing, uh, church services, anything out of the realm of what we usually do during the day. You stay on them. You enforce them, uh, the rules. Uh, you, try to, you try to know your inmates after a while, you know that so-and-so doesn't like this one. And especially like in K-Pod, where you have a split tier, you can, you can separate two inmates because they don't come out at the same time. I'll make it simple for you. Proactive, you eliminate injuries, you eliminate serious situations. Reactive, that's when people get hurt and things go awry and it becomes chaos. That's as simple as I can put it. Aye.